welcome to day 15. Today I want to talk about your blog's homepage. We're talking about the design of your page here for the last several days and the homepage is very, very important. A lot of people tend to think of it the wrong way. A lot of people tend to look at their homepage as just this place where you want to show your latest post and that's really not the most important role of your blog's homepage. So let's talk about that homepage a little bit. Let's go over to my screen here. So let's talk about the real function of your homepage. The first one is to communicate the brand and your USP. Very, very important. You want people to arrive on the homepage and immediately know what the benefit of your site is. Is your homepage doing that? That's the question here. The next one, and this is very important, is to convert them into a subscriber. Now keep this in mind is that most of the people that arrive on your home page are probably either a repeat reader, in which case you want to get them onto the home page, or sorry, in, on your list, or they're a brand new uh, person who's never been to your site before and they came over from some direct link to your home page. In that case, again, you want to convert them into a subscriber. So what you want to have happen here on the home page is that it is that it's basically like a little mini squeeze page. You want them to have some bribe there, have some reason to get on your list and have that be first and foremost what they see. Or if you have your content set up to where your content is designed to get them on your list immediately after they've they've done that, well then you want to have that set up on your homepage as, you know, like a feature post or a feature video or something like that. But one way or the other, you want to make sure that what they see first on your homepage is something that strategically is designed to get them to turn into a subscriber. The purpose of your homepage is not to show off your latest post. Now, don't read into that and think that you need to get all your latest posts off your homepage. That's not true because you are going to have people who are already readers of your site who come by just to find out what you've posted. So in that case, you obviously want to have latest posts on your blog homepage, just like any normal blog would. However, you don't necessarily need them to be super prominent. So what I've done, and I'll show you this in a minute, is that I've got the opt-in at the top, and then I have latest posts beneath that so that it, it, it accommodates both purposes. Think of your homepage as a landing page. Look at it this way. Most of your traffic is probably not going to come to your homepage. It's probably going to go into one of your posts directly, probably from a search engine or something like that. That is a completely different purpose. They're there to consume that content. So you want that content to be prominent and you don't want any distractions for it. Now, when they're on your homepage, they're not there for any particular piece of content. They're just kind of there either to find out what's new or because they don't know who you are yet. In that case, look at the purpose of your homepage differently and don't just treat it as a colossal list of your posts. Now, some of the mistakes that I see on homepages, the big one is displaying way too many of your latest posts. You don't need to show that many of them. You really, it's, this is, again, keep in mind that segment of the people who are already readers of yours, those are the people who are going to care. The other thing is that it demonstrates that you actually are updating the site and that you have some value on the site. So for that reason, you want to display latest posts, but you don't need 10 or 15 of these things. You could keep it as small as five and it would be perfectly fine. The other thing, and I see this mistake on a lot of people's sites, is that they display full posts rather than excerpts. So basically, let's say that they list five blog posts, but they'll display the entire content of the darn thing on the homepage. So you have this long scrolling thing on the homepage. Bad, bad, bad idea. You want it to be you know, the latest post, three to five of them listed, and you want them to have to click on the headline to go read the post. And then underneath that headline is only going to be an excerpt because you don't want a cluttery homepage. When you have clutter, people leave. Lastly, not having a clear eye path to the opt-in box. You want people to clearly see the ability to become a reader or subscriber of your site on that homepage and you want that eye path which is basically the eye land somewhere and the eye makes you know flows in certain places on that site you want that eye path to either land on or lead to your opt-in box very very important because that's one of the primary functions of your homepage so ask yourself this what does your eye immediately focus on when you land on your own homepage 
check that out. Now, it's important to seek third-party perspective, too, because if it's your site, you're probably so ingrained into it that you really don't think about it. You could think it's perfect, but then when you look, when you have somebody else do it who's never seen your site before, they might give you a completely different impression. So it's very important to have third-party perspective on what they immediately see. And again, if they don't immediately see, immediately see anything, if their eye just kind of goes all over the place, well, that's a problem. You want to make sure that it does fall on something, but when it does, when the eye does land on something, you want it to serve one of your primary purposes for your blog, which is probably going to be getting them, getting them onto your email list. If if it doesn't serve that, then change it. You want to make sure that the homepage has a strategic purpose for being there in the way that it's laid out. Very, very important. So that's your homepage. I hope that changes the way that you might have looked at the homepage of your blog. Um, some people you'll notice will have custom homepages where the homepage of their blog looks pretty different than the rest of the site. Um, and there's a good reason for that because you can then custom tailor your homepage precisely to these reasons that we've talked about here. Most blog themes and WordPress by default is really not designed very well from a strategy standpoint because it just lists out your latest post. You know, blogging got its start as a form of online journaling, but that is not what we are anymore. A blog is merely a form of content management these days. So don't just succumb to this template that a blog platform like WordPress gives you because you think that's the way you have to do it. You don't. You can you could bend WordPress to any direction that you ever want, and most themes, the frameworks out there, you can do custom home pages with. Uh, and even if you are not using some framework, you're just using some you know regular theme. There, you know, just look up how to create a custom home page with WordPress. Just Google it. You will find tons of information on there, and you can create a home page with a nice prominent opt-in there. And, you know, the latest posts, but not too many of them with the excerpt only. And it'll, it'll be a lot cleaner and it will not make people go cross-eyed. So that's the homepage. I will see you tomorrow on day 16.